This is Geometry Chapter 9, Section 3, in which we will study rotations. Now, formally, a definition of a rotation is something that takes all the points in the pre-image, remember that's the original shape, and it moves them through an angle around a fixed point, which we call the center of rotation. The angle in question is called the angle of rotation. Right? You're going to be hearing things like 60 degrees clockwise or 45 degrees counterclockwise, things of that sort. Okay? Now, your book uses the convention that unless they say to go clockwise, they're indicating you always are going counterclockwise. So if they just say rotate something 90 degrees, they're telling you counterclockwise. It's understood. If they mean to go clockwise, they have to tell you to go clockwise. So just be aware of that. If they don't tell you a direction, you're going counterclockwise. Right. So our job is to find the image using the indicated rotation around point K. Point K is our center point. They're asking us to rotate it 90 degrees, 90 degrees counterclockwise. So from here, you know, kind of guesstimate somewhere in there, somewhere in there, okay. Silly thing. Had to move my S point a little too far out, I think, but we're okay there. And then we just, as before, connect them. Okay. And then, of course, we could rename them T prime and R prime and S prime. You know, again, I'm not going to be too picky as long as you have the right idea on your picture, then I'm not going to get too bent out of shape. If you drew something that look, made this look like a square instead of a triangle, yeah, I'm probably going to mark that wrong. Okay, I just want you to get the idea of how to do it. It's not, we're not going to be hyper precise and picky here. Okay. Let's try one that's going 180 degrees. 180 degrees would be halfway around a circle around point K. So this point would end up here, ish. J would end up somewhere out here, and M would end up somewhere out here. Now where would K end up? K wouldn't move because K is the center of that circle. So rotating around the center, if you are the center, you don't move. So you're going to get a picture-ish, something along those lines. Again, I'm not being hyper picky and precise and saying you have to measure it out perfectly and get out your protractors and all that. We're just going to kind of eyeball it. Like we did in the last section, I want you to draw the original and then draw me the rotated one as well so that I can see that you rotated it the right amount and, or roughly the right amount. You know, just something so that I can tell you did it the right way. Now, when we do these in the coordinate plane, usually they're going to give you the origin to be the center of rotation. I can't think of a case where they're not going to give you the center being at the origin, being at zero, zero. If they do, then we'll deal with it, but I don't recall it from when I did the homework. But having these rotations at the center, having the center be the origin, makes it where we can have some formulas that will help us get the job done. 
if we're going to rotate 90 degrees, and again, we're talking counterclockwise, then the point XY moves to a new location of negative Y X. Okay, I'll show you what that means here in a few minutes. Whatever coordinates you started at, you're going to switch their places and then switch the sign on the new value that's in the X slot, the old Y. 180 degrees is going to go to exactly the opposites of what they were. 270 is going to be Y negative X. And then here's the tricky question that they sometimes throw at you. What about 360? Well, if you go 360 degrees around, you're right back where you started, so XY would go to XY. Now we're going to apply those rules to plot these points, and then we're going to find its image under a 90 degree rotation. So point F is at 2, 1. There it is. G is at 7, 1. H is at 6, negative 3. And J is at 1, negative 3. Okay. Connect those. And we get something approximating a parallelogram. Okay. Now our job is to rotate this picture 90 degrees around the origin counterclockwise. So these points are going to move in this direction. Now we're going to use the rule that we just learned on the last slide to get the rotated the uh, yeah the rotated coordinates. Two one rotates to one negative two. Seven one or excuse me negative one two. Seven one rotates to negative one seven. Six negative three rotates to three six. And 1, negative 3 rotates to 3, 1. Okay. Now I can plot those points. 4, 5, 6, 7. 3, 6, and 3, 1. have to put it somewhere else and then drag it down to where I want it because it hit the line, but that's okay. You won't have that problem on your paper like I do on the computer screen here. First world probs, right? And so there's our rotated parallelogram. Now remember they didn't tell me a direction so I assumed counterclockwise. And so I used the rule that called for counterclockwise and 90. As always, hopefully if you had questions along the way, you wrote those down, bring them in, and we will see you in class.